Hi. And welcome to the Bye Bitches podcast. My name is Melinda Clark, and I'm here with the incredible Catherine Grace Mirich, Catherine the Great. That's why I named you that. So How I can- many times have I said? Don't say that. CG. CG Mirich. Well, once in a while, mom, I'm the only one who gets to say that from time to time. So this is our second episode of watching the first season of Survivor Borneo which is the retroactively named Borneo. It's really my first time watching the show in detail because um, once again, CG, you were just barely um, breastfeeding. You were like five, six months old. But my question to you is, because I didn't ask you this last time, how did you get hooked on it? Because I was talking to Cheryl, our good friend Cheryl, um, my publicist Cheryl, and she was talking about how much she loved it. And she said, you know what? I've never seen the first few seasons. I started it like season 20 and got hooked. And she's like, she's she was saying that she thought it was a great idea to go back. Right. And I think that's one of the things we're doing. That's here what I did. Podcast. So introduce people to that first season. It's not very interesting how I started watching it, but so Survivor is one of my favorite shows. Like I have seen every season up to I think. I think I'm watching season 37 right now and there's 40 something seasons like the current one airing is like mid 40s. So I I kind of had the same thing as Cheryl. Netflix has two seasons. So I watched one of the seasons and then I was like, okay, I'll watch the next one. And the next season that was available on Netflix is an all star season. And it was all people who had been there before. And I was like, oh, I don't want to watch this. I want to watch these people before they come back. So I went all the way back to season one and since I think it's been a year and a half or something like that I don't remember when I started but I have been watching in order because I didn't want to watch an all-star season without having seen the people in their original seasons so I went all the way back to season one I've been watching it all the way through and it is my go-to for when I'm walking on the treadmill or running on the treadmill I put it on and it's like Oh my God, I'm so tired. And then a challenge starts and I'm like, okay, let's watch this challenge. And then 10 minutes go by and I'm like, oh, I've, I've been walking for 10 minutes. Yes, that, so that's my um, trick too. Find, find I get, I get in the zone watching Survivor. It's my, right. um, it, it's good distraction. I like to find the show that helps me, you know, next thing I know, it's an hour on the treadmill. Just even Literally, That's Survivor for me. That is Survivor for me. I wanted so. to say that last week when we finished and I think, you know, we've been doing this podcast thing and yeah, um, you know, it's really great to talk to people about these movies and and maybe maybe not such a great experience with you watching Porky's. But at the end of the podcast, when we finished, you said, Mom, that was fun. And I I'm really, really happy that you're having fun. But we're in your element now. So, mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, with the whole the whole sag strike, I mean, it it sucks that we're not able to interview these people because I was having a lot of fun, you know, talking to these people. And of course, Vampire Diaries was fun and stuff. But I think talking about reality and like challenge shows like this is very different than talking about right. like scripted TV shows. And I, I've i just been like so crazy busy, I would say, in the last like six to eight months that I don't really have time to sit down and watch a, sh- a real show So reality, like Survivor, Big Brother, Love Island is like, because I can play it in the background while I'm at the gym, while I'm doing chores and things like that. So interesting reality shows like this have become like my thing. So talking about this, not that I didn't like what we were doing before, but this is like what I've been involved in most recently. Like I don't watch a lot of TV anymore. And this show was, and this season was the epitome of just cultural phenomenon. And that's one of the things that we try to explore on this podcast, to go back, see what kind of impact uh, a show had on society. And this show changed television. I know I'm repeating myself. Completely. Podcast, but, you know, let's get into it because we, we watched four episodes last time. We're, um, and now we're on episode four, six, seven, and eight. And five. You just said four. Oh, sorry. Five, six, seven, eight. Sometimes I do that. <laughs> just, five, five, six, seven, eight. And no. a br- lapse in your uh, thinking for a second. It's well, you know what I'm doing. I'm on the Survivor diet right now. <laughs> we had a big weekend, and I'm doing a, I'm doing calorie restriction. So no, uh, you know when you overindulge, overnourish one weekend, you kind of have to be a little bit uh, more restrictive. So maybe I don't I agree, but that's food. fine. <laughs> Well, 
I just was, a, I'm a little low calorie. And you don't need to talk about diet culture on this podcast, mom. <laughs> Uh, well, these guys are definitely losing weight on, on this show. That was like a big thing. But anyway, so episode five, literally called Pulling Your Own Weight. And it had viewership of 24 million viewers. Every episode, it start, the viewership was going up, 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 up. So that's unprecedented for something so brand new on CBS. And uh, well, anyway, just just really, really impressive. And I think that... Uh, when they first started, I just listened to a podcast with Jeff, Jeff Probst um, that he has about Survivor, and he was talking about how this first season literally was just bare bones, one takes, just figuring it out. And I think that's what's wonderful about this season being so pure. And and we're going to de delve into this about how the players just are kind of almost like Bambi. They don't know what's coming, what's coming next. So episode five, pulling your own weight. Let's get into it. At Toggy, Dirk and Sean, you know, they're getting a lot of flack because they're going out fishing and nothing's happening. And Sue. But they, they know they're being bums. They're like, ah, oh, we go out fishing. We're just like laying here. Like they're OK with knowing that they're not pulling their own weight. It seems like. Do you agree with Sue when she, you know, she calls them out and says, oh, yeah. You're you're oh, yeah. a waste of time. If you're not getting if you have no um nothing at the end of if that you have no success over and over and over again, do something else. Do something else that's helpful. Right. I agree. And like uh I don't know if it was Sean or Dirk, but there's literally a clip of the him just like laying on the raft, just like hanging out, not doing any work, and he's like totally okay with it. Well, so. and then Good for Sue. I mean, I think that's her personality. Good for her for being like, hey, let's get a move on. It's an, it, and it's an interesting thing, mm -hmm. too, because we can see that in reality, now that we're all pretty good at watching reality, oftentimes we question the editors and the producers show us the story that they want to show. And it and they might focus on one particular character and it tends to give you a clue of what's going to happen at the end and tribal council. But, you know, first of all, Dirk said something like one of his quotes was the second I stop having fun, I'll vote myself off the Island. I came here to have a great time grow in my faith in the Lord. And that's the most important thing to me, yep. which is, which is from the very beginning, Jeff was saying, this is a game. It was pitched as a competition. It was pitched as heroes and villains. So anyone, and there's quite a few people in, uh, in, on, on this first season, many make that declaration. And that they're, they're just there for fun. The yeah. yeah. It's wild. And I don't think it ever happened again after this season. Well, there's someone else. Once the merge happens, we can talk about it when we get in, you know, go through these episodes, but there's people who just aren't taking it seriously. And you even see with the change to the second season, like one season later, no one is there for a vacation. No yeah. one is there for fun. Right. Just right. one yeah. season later, it's game time, million dollars, like, let's get in the zone. This is the only season that it's like, I'm here for fun, or I'm here for a good time, or growing my faith, you know, things like that. So can I mention, actually, because I know this, I actually, when Sean says, I finally had a bowel movement, I had a big poop. Okay, after two I weeks. literally wrote down, I am so happy for him as someone with just the awful stomach issues. Good for him because I, buddy, I've been there. So I've been river rafting on the grand Canyon for a couple of weeks. And I, that's the biggest, that would be, be my biggest fear that you get a little blocked up because you're out of your environment and that can truly happen. And when he saw that I was doing the exact same thing, there's nothing better after two weeks. And he's a doctor, right? He's like, they're there. I mean, they, that was, that was a reason to rejoice just for, Oh, I, as I was watching, I was like, Oh my God, like <laughs> I've never gone two weeks. Sorry. getting a little, uh, TMI <laughs> on here. I've never gone two weeks, but I've gone quite a while right. and it's not fun. No. And especially being in the conditions of being, you know, sleeping in those little tent or the, you know, the huts and, 
not eating proper meals and everything and like the cramps in your stomach on top of all of that and competing in challenges. Oh my God, I would be a nightmare. Well, and there's something to be said for the reduction in what the amount of food that they're eating, that they're probably using every bit of energy, but more they're using more than they have. Right. Right. Literally. But, and then Dirk was, I mean, I think you should, if anybody ever goes, I'm sure they had strategies to overeat before they went on these shows because you, you don't want to be too skinny going into well, Survivor. That is always something I've thought about. And I think some, I've read articles and I think people on Survivor or knowing they're going on Survivor do different things. Some people load up and try to store as much fat as, po- or carbs, fat. They try to store it. So mm-hmm. they have all this to lose. But then there's other people who slowly train their body to eat less and less and less, and they still exercise and whatever, they're being healthy, but they're training their stomach and their body to eat less and less. So then once they get to Survivor, it's not that big of a drastic difference from what they were eating each day to what they're eating when they're actually on the show. It is so I don't know what strategy works better, but I've read articles of people coming off of the show saying, I did this. I did this. And I don't know what works better, but hmm. well, those are both things a, people have done. There's another observation that I had um, that when you look at the cast picture of the season one, it literally looks like just a group of people. And then you look at subsequent pictures of cast where you can see that like there's like everybody looks like an actor or like a model or a bodybuilder or an athlete. There's a big difference in who they started casting. It's an interesting, I'm not sure what that dynamic is, but the, but the looks of the cast started changing. Mm -hmm. And and I don't know what, what that means exactly. But, um, but then Jeff, actually, he admitted that in the beginning they were casting a type they wanted the the jock. They wanted the characters, yeah. And he's yeah. They wanted the jock and the cranky guy and the gay guy. They want they. I think they just they just got better and more specific at casting it as the seasons went on. He said no, that now they don't do that. They want just oh. a true individual, and they want an authentic individual. And it's not necessarily they don't go for a specific type. Well, even if they don't do it anymore, they somehow do end up getting every yeah. type, even if they don't do it purposefully. But anyways, back to the episode. Yes. The reward challenge is target practice. Um, and they have a slingshot, they have a bow and arrow, and they have a spear. Um, and it comes down to... Sue was Sue really and excited. <laughs> Sue and Joel at the end, I believe. Joel on Pagong. Mm-hmm. Um, and Sue was like, I just really want to smoke a guy on live television. Like, wouldn't that be great if I could just smoke a guy? Dog a guy. She's like, dog. dog. I, mean, dog I just want to dog a guy on live television. Yeah, she- um, but so she doesn't. Um, no, and Pagong, yeah, Pagong gets all this fruit and chickens. This is the first time we see chickens. There's chickens in every single season. And this well, is the and- first time we see the chickens. Oh, really? Okay, so Gretchen points out, they say these are these are egg laying chickens, but Gretchen says, "Who's I didn't? If you if you pay attention to Gretchen, she's smart. Like I think she should have been. A, I mean, I guess she had become somewhat of a leader as well. But she says they're we're going to have to eat them. They're not relaxed enough to lay eggs. <laughs> these chickens are going to be stressed out. Oh yeah. And and Pagong, they were feeling vulnerable because their tribe was getting smaller. And you know, Greg, right. and Colleen were hanging out and taking off and into the woods. And then, um, you know, Greg is really unique. He's a unique character. Okay, I wrote down. So they get the they get the clue for the next immunity challenge, and they find out it's like rowing, and they're just talking about it. And Re- Greg is reading it, and he goes, "Who knows." There's something just around the bend. Da, da, da. I was like, Think he's singing West Side, West Side, Side Story. Story. <laughs> he could be. Who, Who knows? knows? And he did it quite well, too. So he I was like, it, oh, he's, he did it really well. I was like, was there's a jet. no way. It was a jet. <laughs> um, me and my mother are big West Side Story fans for yes. everyone out there. So Very that's why true. it was such a big deal. My favorite musical of all time. Great. Um, uh, I'm really excited for the Anyway. Uh, yeah, we keep getting sidetracked. Okay. Well, I keep, well, <laughs> I, I know that I'm still trying to stick to the rules of, of our strike. So, 
Um, every once in a while, if I have a non sequitur, it turns out that we're I- talking about the play of West Side Story. Right, right. Okay. The play. So in the Muni, you know, Kelly being a river rafting guide and uh, which is everyone instantly says you're rowing because you're they don't rowing. know exactly what it is. Right. So rowing is totally different on a river than it than paddling in, in a the ocean. ocean. Totally different. Totally different. And I think everybody was probably surprised that Jervis Jervis um, actually won. He got ahead really quickly, actually. And she was devastated. She was like, I can't believe I and I the the quote was pretty funny. She's like, I can't believe I lost to someone who can't swim. And you and I both know um, I'm married to a former professional river after and that. I, I'm not a very good swimmer, but I can paddle pretty well. So that doesn't, those two things don't really matter. Yeah. yeah. I, I did say if I was Kelly, I, I would have felt, you know, the embarrassment. It, it sucks when you're in your niche or you think, you know, obviously they're very different, but it, it sucks that her job is river rafting and she lost. I would have been very bummed right. about that. As well, well. And I, I think that um, I've been on, you know, just like playful competitions where you're with people that are really competitive, just like a pickup kickball game or, or softball game or something. And when you have teammates and you make, I make, if I make a mistake and you have a teammate that's really disappointed, that's hard to take. And this oh, is 100%. Well, yeah, this isn't just a simple competition. I totally felt her pain. Yeah. And it's, if, she she was the reason they lost and they have to vote someone off now because of it. Right. Right. Um, and we know that she's in an alliance. So. Right. So she's fine regardless. But so they're getting ready to go to tribal council. And I am just still very just interesting. It's interesting to me that I know like this was the first alliance ever formed and everything like that. Just people are against alliances like Dirk and Sean are like. I'm not, why would I ever get in an alliance? Like, they refuse to talk to people about who they're voting for. And, mm-hmm. like, it's just very odd to me considering, like, that's like that's what Survivor is. It's all about alliances now, you know? And in this first season, there's so many people who are very adverse to alliances. They keep talking. Yeah, we and it it, ha- it comes up a little bit in the... In, yeah, in the next episode, episode, it's a lot yeah. more, but... But, yeah, it's like, talk about this being ethical or being, you know, playing a game or being ethical. And so many people in the Pagong tribe ethical, are yeah. being ethical and trying to say, this is how I'm playing the game. Did they not get the memo? I mean, when Mark, yeah. Burnett, when Mark Burnett pitched this to CBS, it was a competition, heroes and villains. They get voted off. They have challenges. It was always up front a game. So, you know, Rich. It's a game of deceit. Like that. That's just what it is. You want to get to the end. Well, in um, this episode, Richard actually said it's a game, and I've had a strategy since day one. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and he actually. What's interesting is I remember that he was he emerged as the quote villain, uh, you know, for the Ameri- for the audience, and but he is so tame compared. Compared to, to later other. villains, yeah. he, he, I, I would I did not consider him a villain. I didn't either. Watching rewatching it this time, or when I watched it for the first time a year and a half ago, or whenever it was, I never once thought he was a villain. I thought he was a genius. Yeah, he's, I didn't think he, of he's him incredibly as incredibly smart. So at, at the tribal council, you know how Jeff starts asking um, everybody questions, and he asks Dirk about his. Well, first he asks Sean. Uh, has he what what's he doing here and he says well it's nebulous he's like I don't know I have I've been here he's He's like I haven't found my niche I haven't found it and then Dirk actually says I attempt this and I'm unsuccessful I attempt fishing tapioca hunting and I'm just unsuccessful I can't think my way into being more effective and which is you know honest it's an honest conversation answer but then richard is brilliant at these i've been noticing how good he is at answering jeff's questions where he says so what about these alliances and he says well the alliances you're speaking to like me and rudy and dirk and sean totally deflecting that 100 that's real it is so smart and he does it very calm he, he's, he's a genius yes 
He is he paved the way for every good survivor player in later seasons. He laid the groundwork for how you have to play this game to win it. Yeah. He's so right. smart. Right, right. And then everyone built on that as it as yeah. it continued. And then of course, Dirk was voted out. And I mean, understandably, I, I kept yeah. thinking like they should keep Sean the doctor around. But I know they have That's a what doctor, I said, but they have a doctor, a real doctor, I'm sure. On, on. But I think likability factor. I mean, obviously, we don't see everything, but I was going to say I have to say once we finish each episode, mom, would you have voted Dirk off or who would you have voted off? And, yes. Just by yeah. the way they're because, you know, we're only we only get to absorb what the editors exactly what they show us and you know they and there's so many things i've noticed in this first season how it's a, it's sometimes the editing is a little i don't want to say clunky but you know they they mention it, it little, is it is more than the later seasons cuz it's it? you know it's just it's brand new in the later seasons it definitely right. flows much better but right. the other thing i i learned is that they literally just i mean they had a crew of like 85 people in this first season and now it's 300 crew plus like 400 local people. Oh my God. It's and in, the, and the people building the challenges and stuff like that. Yeah, no, the production value has increased. Insanely. And they had only like, they had, I think, eight camera people doing everything. So it's you can only get- a hundred now or something. Yeah, probably. And you have GoPros and drones and everything. Yeah. But, uh, okay. okay. Episode, episode six. Uh, what is it called, Mom? Utter Revenge, which at first I didn't. I was like, what? What is this going to be? Because I was thinking all I could think was this is the first time we see Richard naked. And I was thinking of his naked utter. Naked Richard. <laughs> I was like, is this called Utter Revenge because of his utters? But. Right. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God, Mom. <laughs> well, I guess it didn't apply. That was I was wrong. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. So. What do you. I don't even. So they. I this don't even episode... want to add like. Okay, so this episode is all they kept keep talking about is the merge, the, merge. the impending merge, and this is the first time that's this is going to happen. And well, I I do want to say one thing that rewatching this, I didn't remember everything in the new seasons. They don't tell them they're merging. That's Jeff goes, right. All right, drop your buffs, and everyone's like, ah, we're merging. But so in this season, they knew they knew well in advance that they were merging. Like they knew. After this immunity, they mer they merge right after. Well, which and that's an I interesting. Thought was I, interesting. I think it okay. So, Toggy is now afraid because of their deficit in yeah. people. If they lose again, then it's four six when they merge. And Rudy finally agrees to be. He's like, okay, I'm part of this alliance. Right. This right? is the first time he officially joins. At first, he was like, well, I'll vote with them, but mm. now he's like, I guess I'm a part of this alliance. Right. So then they do a clip of showing Richard naked, and he says, I don't know what's such a big deal. I'm naked 1% of the time, but I remember this being a big deal uh, just in the promotion of the show, that Richard being naked, openly gay, the new villain, he just was definitely the one that everybody was talking right. about. I did say um, or write down that in previous episodes, um, we talked about Dirk, like, hating Richard's sexual talk. And I was like, if Dirk was still there, he would have hated Richard being naked. It would have been, I think it would have caused drama because he had already said, like, I don't like that Richard talks about, like, sex all the time. So, I mean, him being naked, I think, would have made it worse. The audience... We think that he's only naked from this episode on. I have a feeling he was in other episodes. They just didn't show it or they mm. waited to show it possibly. But who knows? And maybe that was one of the reasons he was he was not. Um, maybe that's one of the reasons he got voted off. He wasn't cool. Yep, maybe. And he, who knows? But Richard, he's constantly saying things that are so confident. I mean, honestly, that idea, if you say it, you believe it, it becomes true. And he says, I think I'm in control. I'm in control of who is being voted out and yep. that's are being voted off. And that is all that matters to me. I'm in control of this. He knows that yep. he, at least, you know, he, there's no question about that. So, um, but then at Pagong, they focus the on- The boys are being stupid yeah. at Pagong. Joel, Joel's really confident 
that he starts talking about the fact that we've got the numbers and Colleen's like, he, he's jumping the gun talking about how this, because we could still lose this immunity. Right. And, and Joel's I, talking about the merge, the merge, the merge. And Colleen's like, well, what if we vote you out and we lose? It'll be even. Yeah. And then Jervis says the only thing smarter than like, what is it? Um, girls are as dumb as cows. Yeah. Girls That's, are so stupid. Yeah. Girls, girls are stupid. as dumb as cows or something like That's, that. And so, thus, thus the title, Utter Revenge. Because <laughs> I took me a little bit to get that. But yes, no, uh, it's not about Richard being naked. <laughs> no, but they do this. OK, so there's a couple things that they focus on in this episode. And uh, one of them is the fact that Joel, from the very beginning, they do this montage of him. And the term mansplainer hadn't been invent invented yet. They said, I remember Gretchen was saying, he has to explain right. everything and teach us everything that we're doing. And it's getting old. What was the term they used? Um, not misogynist. What was the term they chauvinist. used? To chauvinist. 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 Right, right, right. So he's um, he's aff he offended the girls by telling them they were dumber than a cow. Well, no, that and was Jervis. Yeah. OK, that's Jervis. Right. But, but Joel and Jervis go hand in hand with the chauvinist mansplaining. He laughed about it and all they're this. Toge they're together in it. Right. So in the meantime, they know they're like, we better eat our chickens because we, when we merge, we don't want to give it to them. And they come back to the and one of their chickens. You're, jump you're jumping ahead. Oh, you're jumping ahead. This is after the challenge. Oh, is it? Yeah, okay. you're jumping ahead. This is when oh, they get back okay. from the challenge. Okay, so let's go to the reward challenge. So they get the clue for the reward challenge, which is the can of dog food. I would love to find out if that really was because that was disgusting. I mean, Richard, in fact Richard ate it and then Jenna and Gretchen cooked it up and ate it. But then it, they had about five bites a piece and they said, yeah, we're good. There was so much left over. You would yeah. think they would. But they still ate it. I just that, that I had to close my eyes on that one. Yeah. But uh, so the reward challenge. Um, they had to do this nighttime challenge racing mm -hmm. into the barracks for these items. And oh, it felt so, so I felt so bad for Richard because he got the duplicate. The duplicate. He thought it was the can opener and he accidentally grabs another knife. So he screwed it up and lost. Right. I don't remember what the reward was for the challenge, though. What is it? Isn't it food? It was some kind of food. Okay. Anyway, whatever. That, it was food. They need <laughs> food. It was food. But so when Richard they, yeah. screws it up, and then I believe that is when they walk back into camp, or maybe it's after the immunity challenge. I don't remember. But the what? What's it called? A water mo mo monitor? The a alligator. Monitor? Thing? It's like an alligator, but they it's a monitor, it, right? Yeah, it had he had eaten one of their chickens, but yep. they salvaged a lot of it, which is oh yeah. Yeah. You don't let good meat go to waste. <laughs> Not when you're eating rice and rats. So this next immunity challenge, when it's on that sandbar, was very elaborate. They had um, this was a, an army, uh, I guess, obstacle mm -hmm. or military based obstacle. I said this. This is the first challenge that looks anything remotely like future challenges. Right. Like the relay race aspect of people running different legs. That's what survivor challenges are like now. This is the first time they're like stepping it up from something that's just like one leg of the race and there's no winning or moving forward or backward. This one, it, it could be anyone's game. You slow down at this point, you pick up at that point, you know? You can just see the exhaustion on the on the contestants. It's like, oh yeah, that one looked, that. that's when I look at it and go, oh, I just feel tired looking at it. But uh, Toggy ends up winning, and it's very close, but though very close. One, of the, one of the closest things that we've seen yet far. And um, then when we get to the tribal council, because uh, Pagong goes, uh, with help from Greg, the women of Pagong vote out Joel. Yep. And I I don't always watch the credits to the very end, but at the some at the very end, sometimes they the ousted yeah, cast they, member. a little like a not vlog, but like no, he just he gets confession, the confessional. 
It's a bit of a confessional. And he says, I'm not a chauvinist. I'm so he said, I'm upset that I would leave this island with people thinking I'm a chauvinist. They must have an inferiority complex. Uh I just thought, oh, my God, you just stepped in an even deeper. You are just digging yourself into a much deeper hole, buddy. It's a but you know what? We're talking about the year 2000 and look where we are now, where the awareness is, you know, really important that when you if it doesn't if somebody says to you what you just said to me is very offensive and a lot of people think to me it's offensive to me well it's just a joke that's that kind of behavior isn't yeah saying things like oh i'm sorry you took it that way isn't like okay anymore you know what i mean you have to yeah well so would you have voted out joel well he's the interesting thing is he's a good player physically but they knew they were merging, so it doesn't matter anymore. They don't need his strength ah, on their true. tribe. Good. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I think at some point it's and and from that point of. Yes, he, he had rubbed them the wrong way, although Gervais, Jervis. he's Jervis. Somehow he's charming enough to stick around. I said that like I I think me personally, I probably would have voted Jervis out because I mean, they, they, you know, they were together in this chauvinist ideals, whatever. But he I think I would have voted Jervis out because he's much more charismatic and charming. And like, he seems to have people wrapped around his finger a little bit. And he says earlier in this episode, he's like, I don't do work. I know I don't do work. And Jenna goes, yeah, Jervis doesn't do anything. I don't even know why I haven't voted him out yet. And I know Joel was being a dick, but I think at this point, I probably would have voted for Jervis. But Jervis tried to actually, he I don't know if he tried to, somehow they forgave him because he admitted that he shouldn't have said it or tried to apologize or something, I think. Yeah, it's, I, I don't know. I think Jervis, well, thinking from the later survivor mindset, he's more of a threat because people like him more. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to go to the end with Jervis because people like him. We're also talking about Pagong and they are all about they're all about the morals, fun, the fun and happy and, and, and liking somebody, each other and somebody that makes waves or ripples that like Joel, they got rid of him. So, right. uh, okay. so let's move into episode seven, which is probably the only time this ever happened, because I don't know, like based on what you said, they they do uh, it sometimes. They do it. I know sometimes. what you're going to say. What is the name of this episode, mother? It's called The Merger. And this oh. one had well, that's that's very self-explanatory. Right. So these first three episodes all had about 24 million viewers, which is amazing. This was pretty I, I totally got riveted on this one because uh, that they choose an ambassador representatives. From, yeah. From each side to get to check out the camp. But then obviously. So what we learned, because I didn't think it was super clear, but um, just from the way they sh- um, the way they edited it and showed that Toggy is way more organized. It's a better camp. Mm-hmm. They're just getting fish wherever they are. That's there's, there's yep. a more it's like pop- Rich caught stingray and they're eating stingray and rice. And Jenna's like, well, so Jenna's the representative from Pagong and Sean is the representative from Toggy. And Jenna's like eating this great meal with stingray and rice. And Sean is over at Toggy and they're trying to drink coconut water and they showed Fun. Greg taking a sip and going, oh, that's awful. It's like, obviously, they're going to want to move to Toggy because Jenna just had this feast, you know, well, it's an interesting thing, too, because it was so when so then Jenna and Sean get to go negotiate oh, out on the sandbar. A beautiful meal. Yes, lobster and potatoes and four bottles of wine and beds and everything. And so when you go back to the uh, to the rest of the tribes, they're saying we know that they already knew that everyone wanted to move to Toggy. Richard says, right. "What? What? What why are the negotiations? Why wouldn't they want to?" And all I, I wrote down like, "Ooh, resentments are going to build up here when they come back and start screaming about what they got." And and I thought, how interesting the producers are like, let's give these two people just give them an amazing evening and see if it. And I thought it was going to invoke some kind of jealousy it, or it res- didn't that it much. Didn't. No, I, I do want to say they've at this point, they've been out there for 
what is this, episode seven. So it's been about three weeks, maybe a little less than three weeks, like 17, 18 days. Drink two people sharing four bottles of wine. That freaking hangover after eating almost nothing for three weeks and not drinking alcohol. I just want to say, I bet they had massive freaking headaches in the morning. <laughs> yeah, red wine can do that. That was all I was thinking about. I was like, oh my God, having no food, no nutrition, not drinking for three weeks, and then sharing two bottles. Maybe they ate enough. They were hungover. To, to lay a bait. There's no way they weren't hungover. Okay. Well, so they come back and it's, and they're super excited. And Jenna's like, I think she's just so excited. You have five minutes. And I thought that was like, is that what they do now? You have five minutes to gather your Sometimes. stuff and move. Sometimes. So they grab their stuff. And I don't think anyone was surprised. That's the reason everyone knew they were going to go to Toggy. Yeah. So um, at first they, you know, they were concerned, but they come back and they did make a few comments about the fact that they got to eat and, you know, have a, have a nice evening, but they move. And the, my observation instantly, Greg changes. He instantly, because he playing, he starts because playing. They're talking about how and Gretchen and Greg, they're, they're still talking about the fact that they're playing a pure game, an ethical game. And when they, they put together, the producers put together this, as Greg's talking about Richard and the montage, the music swells and it's villainous music. I thought Greg was, I mean, I still don't think anyone in this season is really a villain. Like, that's kind of a stretch with their personalities. But Greg, you can see, like, they literally say that Greg is playing into Richard's gayness and flirting with him and trying to mess with him. And Richard notices it. He's like, I know what he's doing. Like, I like, I know he's playing some game. So well, and and actually, Greg has this quote that I wrote down. Um, if people are fear and self-preservation motivated, they'll band together. They'll form alliances. They'll start beating people out to try and get rid of the strong ones. If that happens, I hope they vote me off really soon because that's not me. That's that to me is really boring. He is completely on a different plane. Yep. Somehow he's convinced himself that that's boring to do to play that game or because it's fear based and to to and I think the problem was too many of the teammates all felt the same way in the right. tribe so when they get over to Toggy all of a sudden their eyes are open like oh this is a threat and you see and this is so fascinating how people have to change and adapt being mm -hmm. put into this different situation and this is when just when you know we're in episode seven, there's new life in the episode. And, and it's like, it's really exciting. So I think that's just, I think it's just brilliant. It really is wonderful TV to keep that audience in, engaged. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so then we have the first individual immunity challenge. Um, and it's literally just holding your breath for as long as possible. Right. Is that's the first leg of it. You just go underwater and hold your breath. And, and Rudy, I Rudy did really well. Rudy obviously. did well, but I was surprised that like the Jervis went the longest and it was like two minutes and 30 seconds. So I'm going to just talk physiologically. Men have larger lungs. And you know I thought that was a short amount of time. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, I thought people would go longer. Oh, no. I mean, it depends. I mean, I wondered if there's there's little tricks like you can do these little tricks to get some oxygen flowing into your body. Cause I used to do that on, and, but it's possible that they were told you're allowed to take one breath and go under and just go. Yeah. And some people have like larger lungs than other people. And, yeah. you know, just, it's just something that, uh, what you're born with. So, so it turns out that, uh, the three, it was Sean, Greg and Jervis. Jervis. And the next leg guess, of it, leg of it is that they have to crawl on an underwater ladder to get and, and release buoys. And, right. So and it's then, really close between Greg and Sean. Of course, Jervis, who can't swim, is he's. I never back. saw him. It was exactly. He started and then he was back. He like couldn't do it. He tried and then he had to go up for air and then tried to go back down. They show him once. 
the winner, they show Chervis like out in the water and he's like, I'm good. Okay. Give I didn't me a see second. <laughs> like, where'd he go? He well, tried, but he, yeah, he was not successful. Greg and Sean were in it together. Yeah. Being underwater and doing, if not having confidence in swimming. Oh, yeah. I'm like my, yeah, you know, I'm terrified of drowning in the ocean. Yeah. We got hit so, by two waves. Yeah, I almost drowned that one time. So now going to a point in the ocean where I can't touch the bottom is like my biggest fear. Well, we're going to, we're going to. So I get it. Once you move back to California, see Oh you yeah. Can... When I move back, I'm learning to surf and yes. I'm getting over my fear. Adam, <laughs> when you listen to this, my stepfather, you are teaching me to surf, buddy. Yes, me too. We'll do it together. <laughs> Don't tell him. Just let him listen to the episode and he'll be like, oh, Okay. <laughs> I guess I'm teaching her to surf now. Yeah, it's exciting. We have like four surfboards now. Okay. Uh, anyway, sidetracked. Sidetracked. So um, Greg, Greg wins. wins. Yes, Jinx. close. Yes, close battle. Jinx. And at tribal council, the disorganized Pagong tribe and Sean completely split the vote individually. Almost well, every single person got a vote, I think, except for Kelly. Yeah, it was like it just and but it but. It was it was it was such great TV because it was like all of a sudden uh, you everyone gets a vote. But then you can see they count the votes. All of a sudden, Gretchen got voted off. Total surprise to me because me the editors didn't let us know who they were coming after. I had no idea who they were thinking about going into tribal council. Like every single episode, they hint at a couple people like Jervis and Joel. Sean and Dirk, like they hint at people or like earlier it was like, I think her name was Cindy, maybe. And Rudy, like, you know, they hint at people going into this tribal council. I had no idea. I had zero idea. I knew obviously the, the four, the alliance of four was probably going to take control because they're the only ones who have said we're an alliance. We vote together. But I had absolutely no idea who on Pagong they were going to pick off. Right. And I mean, it was and and literally, I think going into that next episode, because the next episode is episode eight. Thy name is duplicity. Twenty six million, by the way. But I'm just saying they were shocked. They were like, it was a brand new game. Eyes open. Wait a second. We just got our leader just got voted off. It's very clear that they they were very it was very clear that. Four yeah. people in Toggy voted her off. Well, okay. Going back, I still have things to say about the last episode. That's fine. Um, Sean from Toggy is voting in alphabetical order every single tribal council. What? Right. That is not the game. Well, he put he, that he because he can't figure it out. And that's he said, he said I don't want to play the game. He doesn't want right. to play. So and and by doing that, wait, was Gretchen part of that? Was he voted Gretchen? No, no. He voted Colleen. Colleen. That's what it was. OK, because that's where he no announced it. He said, yeah, I'm he says he goes, I'm voting. And it was also just men in the early 2000s. He goes, she's cute. She's nice to look at. I would hate it if she left because I want to keep looking at her. But my strategy is alphabetical order. I'm voting for Colleen. I was like, oh, okay. oh you did. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But so I had no idea. I said my strategy, if I was in their position, going with the game, like I would have voted out who is the strongest person? Who's going to win these challenges? Who do we need to get rid of? You know? So I said if I was on Toggy, I would have voted out Jervis. If I was on Pagong, I would have voted out Sean. Because my mindset is get rid of the guys who are stronger and could win challenges. Obviously, Jervis isn't good in the water, but he could win other things. I, My brain immediately was like, get rid of the stronger people. Well, and I think that Toggy thought that Gretchen is their leader. It, dis it disorganizes them. Mm -hmm. and, and it definitely hurt. You could see their reactions were like, what? Like, wait a second. They ganged up on us. And it was this eye opening, no ethical play. Like they're they're living in this little fantasy world of we're just here and we're going to get we're going to vote based on people's merits. Yeah. No, no, no. no, no. People are you like vote, you vote out the people who you think would beat you in the end. It's a million dollars. Yeah. It's so wild yeah. that people are. So I thought it was fascinating because if you'll never see this on another season. 
because no. people do. No not. one's like this on no. any other season. It is all a game from here on out. Yes. So I mean, it's it's it's. But I I just think it's such a comp a comment on human nature because yeah. we can all. I think there are people out there that were probably watching who so were sided with. Gretchen and Greg talking about ethical play, no alliance. Yeah, at that time, 100%. Yeah. This, like, this show, this season is the first of its kind to be like this. Yeah. No, so. I'm sure the audience was, like, on their side and thinking, like, oh, that's so horrible. And, you know, but but that's not the name of the game. You know, there's, there's another thing that um, I uh, they were talking about, and I do remember this, that, that Jeff was saying in the beginning of the show – you know, it's a game. It's a it's a fun competition. But that at the tribal councils, he he said in the he was very serious. Like, you will be voted off, and and that people used to make fun of him being so serious. And he said, no, I was serious, but I also was in on the joke. Oh that yeah, it, yeah. It, yeah. He play he plays it up. You but know, it, he does it, it on it, purpose. It came off very corny to some of us watching for the first time going, what is so serious? But it is corny, but like, yeah. yeah, that's the drama. And it's like tribal council is supposed to be this sacred place for the people of the islands and yeah. things like that. Like it is supposed to be beyond dramatic, right? Like right. it's meant to be drama. Yes. And I think people loved it. So, so yeah. Episode ep eight. Thy name is duplicity. 26 mm. million. The, the numbers are going up after that. After they merged, people are like, ah, let's yeah. watch more. So, uh, like you said, this is Pagong realizes that there must be an alliance. If these four people voted together, there has to be an alliance. It's the first time they're realizing it. Right, right. And Jenna was like, uh oh, I better get close to she the women. She has to do something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And she seemed to think that, you know, she could connect with the women and just do her best. Um, and and I, I think she's she did a decent job of it from what we saw in this episode, because Sue said, you know, it, before the merge, Sue was like, I thought I was going to hate Jenna. She's just too much of a ball of energy. I, I'm not going to like her. And Sue says in this episode that she thought Jenna was going to piss her off. She's like, I actually really like Jenna. Like, yeah. Jenna's really cool. Yeah, like she is. so. She's I think pretty... Jenna's doing her doing the best she can to put herself in a good position. Yes. So Richard actually said to the camera, "He's like, I wonder who actually voted me." And it he and he he, he, he says, "I assume it's Greg." He thought it was one of the guys, but it was Colleen. She yeah. who, who said, "Too confident. I'm getting that guy out." And she was smart. Colleen was like, he is the one that's, but no, everyone's too scared because Richard equals fish. Or right. Jer Jervis said, he Jervis literally says, if we vote Rich off, we don't eat. Because now in this episode, this is when they're starting to realize they have to ration food. They start talking about how Rudy's always in the kitchen, just eating food. Like this is when they actually have to measure the rice, cook a certain amount because they're running out. And if they get rid of Rich, they they don't have protein. No one else knows how to fish. And Greg instantly because Greg, you know how he kept saying he didn't want to be a leader, but mm -hmm. he shows up and now is totally intimidated more more so than anybody else. I feel like, and tries to get the takes the um, goggles, uh, the the mask and the goggles or the uh, and the spear, and tries to attempt and he gets a sea a sea a sea urchin, even though sea urchin are like amazing, but. Uh, Richard was like, it's just gut. Uni. They're yeah. called uni. And Greg was <laughs> like, oh, it's harder than than it looks. And that Richard was. I am beyond impressed at how good Richard is in the water and catching things. Mm -hmm. Like he makes it look easy. Right. Like he, he makes it look so easy. And I'm like, that's just another thing that this guy did well or is doing well. You he know, it's. There's one more thing, too, that um, Greg did. He was because they started to ask him or because you can tell that, you know, when they're being interviewed by the producers, they but, ask leading questions. Yeah, get, but yeah. He says he's because he's been hanging out with Colleen and he calls her, His you know, you pet cat. the kitten, you look right in the kitten's eye and then you snap its neck. Yep. What? Like, what is going on with this guy? Like, this is nothing other than, you know playing the game he is playing the game this is the first time and colleen and jenna are like greg's different 
Greg is yeah, acting different. Notices. Everyone notices. Everyone. From Pagong, I mean, probably except Jervis because his head's in the clouds. But, like, Colleen and Jenna are like, Greg's different. He you is know, acting different. And I remember, I've, I've read, and I seem to remember that somehow Greg and Colleen were kind of breakout fan favorites or people talked about them a lot. Mm-hmm. But I, I saw somebody else write about the fact they said, how were they breakout stars? Because it seems everything seems so tame by comparison. But we have to remember it's brand new. It doesn't have to be it didn't have to rely on bigger and bigger and bigger and better. This the, the subsequent seasons had to rely. Yeah, on. exactly. This is still just the first time, you know. So we, there's the reward them. challenge. Um, and it was target practice, right? They was bow and arrows. Yes. Um, and, and they, they get very, very challenging bow and arrow. Yeah, that yeah. like doesn't work. But so they get little sneak peeks of videos from home. And it's the first time we, you know, see people's family. But Jenna doesn't get one from her it's daughters and her mom. Considered one of the saddest moments in survival so history. So sad. And she was already missing her daughters, of course. And of course, I was like, why did she not get this? And it turns out that her mom was taking care of her twin daughters and they'd gone on vacation, did not get the message soon enough. These are this is back in the day where you literally yeah, where you have to send the VHS tape to Borneo. Right. And I saw a um, interview with a producer who said she the mother did her best. It just they tried to hold off as long it didn't as make it in time in time. So it um, but it makes for great TV because I all I thought was, oh, what's going on back home? What kind of tra- what's her backstory? And it really wasn't anything other than it just they were out of touch because in those days, if you're on vacation where you couldn't be, you, you don't know, have cell phones like that, like not in the way we do now. Yeah, um, yeah. But it was really sad. Very. I was I was sad. But so Greg wins. Greg wins. And um we can- we see where his personality comes from. So they see they say you can do whatever you want with the tape. You can keep it private or you can share it with everyone else. And so everyone watches it. Except and- Jenna, who is just standing there shooting arrows instead of watching Greg's video, which I was like, that is very sad. They were like panning out of her shooting yeah. the bow and arrow. But yeah, I mean, that's how, I mean, if you're in an emotional state, you can't be around. You don't want to, yeah, or, you don't yeah. want to be around the happiness. But anyways, we see Greg's video. Which, and, uh, and for some reason, Rudy was like, he, <laughs> sounds like he's talking about incest. He literally just spells it out. He's like, well, Greg literally says like, yeah, I sure, I'm sure it was great. Like people felt good watching you. I'm sure they're thinking about what it's like to feel you up. And Rudy goes, that's his sister. Like, I mean, I don't know if he's talking about incest or something, but, uh, but the sister was doing this. Mm, 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 yeah, she, mm, mm, I love mm, you. Mm. Yeah. It was a little, it was a interesting little odd. family, interesting family. Yeah. It was entertaining. Say. They clearly, I have a feeling that video is a little more entertaining than others. So, um, but this is when they they get together at the fire. They have some nighttime footage of them telling like sex capades. Mm-hmm. And it's, this is when Greg starts playing into Richard as a he, strategy. He, he says like the question comes up, have you ever been with a man? And he says, we'll talk later. And it's he totally did it to sidle up next to Richard. 100%. 100%. This is when we see someone other than Richard starting to try to play the game. Greg for the first time. Richard is a powerful player and he was in, immediately intimidated and Richard did like flirting with him. He liked yeah. it. You could see but it. You Richard never- also knew that it was a strategy. Richard saw right through it right. immediately. So this immunity challenge by the way, is wild. Like it, it, confu- it, it, it gave me anxiety how chaotic it was with right. them grabbing the, car- the carabiners on the wires. And I just like it, because of the editing, it's it's for the viewer. There's no way to see where they can go. All it looks like is chaos. Sure enough, some of them are lost if they didn't pick the right one. Mm-hmm. Like you pick the right one. But it's I mean, I just wrote wild challenge and. I couldn't even I couldn't even explain to you what the challenge was, honestly, like they're racing through some kind of maze and they have to stay attached to the wires. And I I couldn't even describe it to you. It was it was 
hard to watch and understand what was happening. Right, right. I felt like I was watching it and then it was like, oh, there's a winner now. Okay. Jervis won, which is all you need to know, I guess. (laughs) And at tribal council, it's so funny because Sean is now at Greg. He's he's so he just happens to be there and the alliance votes Greg off as well. I think they probably use because Sean, I think he announces it to the group like I'm just going alphabetical. I think everyone knows. So they probably maybe they use that to their advantage, knowing that Sean was voting. Greg, supposedly you're correct that somehow and I just missed it. I didn't see. Apparently, people say that they piggybacked off his alphabetical knowing because you're smart. They knew he was doing it. They knew it was a vote. Yeah, in the direction they wanted. So they know what he's doing and he's so he becomes this silent part of the alliance. And so that's that's a very smart move to do. But then Greg's mock crying was I didn't expect anything less of a. It's such a deflection and bruised ego of somebody who I mean, he just did such an he had such an interesting journey because it felt like. I don't know. He felt like he he had to make a joke. You know, you deflect with humor when you're hurt. Right. And just given his, you know, boisterous, outrageous personality in the previous eight episodes, I wasn't surprised that he went out like that. Yeah. I I wasn't surprised at all. Like, I, yeah. Um, But mom, would you have voted for Greg too? Who would you have voted out? Now that they've introduced this immunity thing and Jervis couldn't get voted out. But yeah, I think it's some. Yeah. I mean, if everybody if somebody suggested it, I probably would not be that Richard guy. I'm not going to be necessarily the leader, but I'm going to be the team player and go along with um, what what my teammates want. Yeah, I think, again, my mindset is if I was in this position, I want to get rid of the people who could beat me in immunity challenges And Greg won the previous one in the seventh episode. So, okay, Jervis has immunity. Greg won the previous one. Let's get him out, you know? I think Gretchen said it where she said, we're all going to be, we're not, we're not two separate tribes anymore. We're one. And that's not true. They're literally going to target the other tribe. And they, I think they were just blindsided that they, that they would do that. It just didn't. Yeah. Feel like- Alliances weren't something that was even like an idea for more than half of the people on this tribe. Yeah. Well, and, and, and the, those in the Alliance now have to know that when it gets down to them, that there's going to be some duplicitous play. Yeah. Name is duplicity. And, but I think between, I mean, I don't know. Rudy's just kind of like there, but I think between Sue Kelly and rich, they know You know, like Rich obviously is the one who's making all the big moves and stuff. But Sue, Kelly and Rich know once it gets down to it, they're going to have to be a little. Yeah, I mean, I think it's an incredible I mean, all of this, because we should mention that Big Brother starting by the time this is out, we'll have already already started our Big Brother watch (laughs) um, because (laughs) reality is the name of the game during our strike. And we're going to and we're watching these Big Brother. What do you call them? Evictions. The evictions. We're, uh, every Thursday night, we're watching evictions on Patreon, guys. Yes, every Thursday. Starting night. August 4th. Starting August 4th. Well, uh, third, it's coming third. out after. So, uh, but but the point is, it's a similar concept, but they're not in on an island and foraging for food. And, you know, this is the kind of show that led to Big Brother as well. And so... I just think it's incredible what these contestants are doing and and what they have to put up with and put yeah. into the elements. And I think it really is this season is the I don't know, it's the benchmark. It's the epitome of what competition shows are today. And um, I'm really glad you got me into this. So I enjoyed it. So next time we're going into we're getting close to the finale, guys. And um, I think that's about it for. Yeah. Yeah. So that was episodes five through eight of season one Survivor Borneo. 
Thank you for listening to the Bye Bitches podcast. Join us next week for more Survivor Season 1 Borneo. And head over to our Patreon for bonus content and live Zooms where we're going to be watching Big Brother every Thursday watching the evictions. Uh, You can follow my mom on Instagram and TikTok at TheMelindaClark. And you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at CGMIR. And please follow Bye Bitches Podcast on Instagram. And that's about it. We'll see you next week. Bye, bitches. Bye. Bye.